Hi, I'm Matt Hancocks, and welcome to the premiere of Season 2 of Playing Devil's Advocate. Chris would be here, but he's helping out with some renovations around it. But I'm here to talk about films that maybe weren't as bad as people said they were. And as will be a tradition with us, the season begins with an alien film. And it's got double the awesome points because it's a crossover with another monster, The Predator. One is a swarm of insect-like night terrors come to life, and the other is an alien hunter with invisibility, a shoulder cannon, and a face that even a mother can't love. These two are fought together in both comics and video games, and until in 2004, they finally got their own full movie, directed by Resident Evil and Mortal Kombat director Paul W.S. Anderson. You know, before he lost his mind and turned a video game adaptation into a fan fiction starring his wife. Anyway, that's a story for another time, because we're looking at the sequel, Alien vs. Predator Requiem. A film brought to us by the brother Strauss, special effects artists that have directed this and one other film that I have not heard good things about. The sequel's build is a much gorier follow-up to the original film, and it was pretty much universally panned when it first came out. But is it really that bad? I mean, some people seem to like it. You know, maybe this one could just be some bloody fun. So let's take a look at Alien vs Predator Requiem. <laughs> The film starts off right where the last one ended, with a predator ship flying away from Earth, only to send a smaller predator ship back to Earth. Okay. We then see an alien bursting through the chest of a dead predator, giving birth to the Pred Alien, the big bad brother of the aliens, brought straight from the games. It quickly grows full size and gets to killing, but in the middle of the fight, the ship is crashed into Earth, you know, as aliens often do. And of course, the ship is carrying a bunch of facehuggers, which quickly find a father and son and attach themselves to their facing, laying eggs inside the bodies, which soon burst out into little aliens. Gross. We then meet this guy. I think his name is like Daryl or Darren or something. He just got out of prison. Then that's about the end of that. But he does have the compelling personality of... Anyway, we also have his little brother called Leo... Lenny, I don't know, he gets his ass kicked for not having a personality either, and his keys are thrown into the sewer. The brothers go into the poop water to try and get them back. You know, usually in most films, this would be a perfect opportunity to have the two characters get closer. Maybe reveal a bit about their personality, set some stuff up for later. I'm starting to see why this film was considered pretty bad. But hey, you know, we don't necessarily need strong characters when we have blood, right? I mean, the killing's gonna start soon. Oh my god, this first half of the movie goes on forever. Also, we have two other main characters, one investigating the deaths of the aliens and another who came back from war to find herself estranged from her daughter. These go nowhere. Moving on! But our possible saving grace is the Predator, Wolf, who is sent to Earth to clean up the mess left by the aliens. And yes, he is named after the guy from Pulp Fiction, and that's pretty cool. He comes with all new weapons, and uses them in a fight scene that is caught short way too soon. A recurring theme with the Predator and Alien fights in this, they are always, always cut short. Either the Predator is knocked away, or the aliens get away, or the camera just decides, eh, let's not film that one. But soon the killing starts and the action gets going. Presumably, because I can't see a thing. It's quick cook shaky cam and darkness, just like I never wanted. Well, at least we have the gore, right? But it's so tame! A few heads explode, but the CG makes it look so fake that it's rarely worth mentioning. There's a couple of people get stabbed in the head by the alien. But that was in the previous films. Same with the flayed corpses. In fact, you only had one flayed corpse. But hey, this guy's face get melted. That was pretty cool for a few seconds. Plus there was this. <laughs> See, this is more like the hilarious death that we needed more of. But then the little brother is stabbed by an alien! Except it's... He's okay, and it kind of affects nothing. The pointlessness continues. But finally we have Wolf fighting the Pred alien in complete darkness so we can't see anything. But then he takes off his mask, and shit gets real, until the military cuts the fight short with a nuclear bomb. Screw this movie, it's the worst I've ever seen! 
There is nothing to enjoy here at all. I'd call the character stuck if there was any character in this, but nobody has any kind of arc or even a personality. The acting isn't really bad, but it's hardly a film saving grace since there's really nothing to work with. The story is non-existent. The first half is tension without the tension, because we've already seen the aliens and the predators and we know they're doing stuff in the background, so there's no real kind of build-up. And then when the film finally kicks off, it gets even worse! It's a series of people dying in the dark until the movie just kind of ends. I was with the military bombing the town, leading the civilians in to believe that they were going to be rescued. Oh, I get it, some kind of subtle commentary on how the government lies to people. The government doesn't lie to people, let's bomb the city people who believe the government. Except, first of all, taking shots to the government is cheap and it's overdone. Secondly, it leads to nothing, because we don't see why the government are doing this. So it feels completely pointless and tacked on. Now, when the corporations screw people over in the other films, they were at least getting something out of this. Why is this just, we don't want the aliens to get out? But they have no idea how the aliens work. They don't know that they lay eggs in people's stomachs, so... They have no reason to suspect this. Like, the only contact that humanity's had with aliens was an expedition in the Arctic, of which there was one survivor, and that was probably a few hours before this happened, so I highly doubt that she would have told the military that that's what these things are in that short amount of time. The action is mindless and barely existent. Everything is in the dark, and it isn't lit up like in other films would. Even the fight in the pyramid in the previous alien film had some kind of lighting that actually felt natural, and you could see what was happening. Oh, but the film has gore, right? Wrong! I would go on a tirade about how gore doesn't make a film good, pointing out how Saw backed up its gore of interesting stories and characters, and how Evil Dead 2 had its comedy and ash. But any comparison is pointless, because the gore in this is pitiful! You had a guy skinned and hung upside down. Great! You caught up to a film from the 80s. You had some guys being stabbed in the head. So did every single other alien film. The only noteworthy ones were the guy's face being melted and this. I will never get tired of that. That is probably the only redeemable thing of this film in how hilarious it is. And yet, the very act of having it makes most of the first half of this film feel entirely pointless because it was mostly focused on her relationship with little brother. Oh, but at least she got to stand around in her underwear. Friday the 13th is laughing at your pitiful attempt at sexualization. Every single fight between the alien and predator is cut short. Even the Predator seems lost with no purpose. He just kind of resorts to doing the same thing that the alien is doing, occasionally stabbing people, and sometimes an alien. Even some of the worst films I've ever seen at least left me with something, anything. Transformers 3 at least had some cool action scenes, even if it did piss me off. The Resident Evil The Final Chapter was goddamn awful, but at the very least, that thing had some kind of direction. There was like a goal that the characters were heading towards. It ended up being kind of pointless and hollow, but it was something. This is just things happening until things stop happening. Even the worst film I've ever seen, The Time Machine I Found at a Yard Sale, doesn't frustrate me as much as this one because I wanted this to be good. I had high expectations for this. This isn't just like some brinky dick sequel that you pick up at the bargain game. This isn't just like Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3. No, this was like in cinemas and highly, you know, it was highly advertised. But this is what we get? Even the worst B-movies had some kind of entertainment value to them, but not this. Just not this. All I feel is anger at having my time wasted. Don't watch this movie, even if I'm a completionist. If you want a fun, gory film, try Alien Resurrection. Or, you know, any of the Friday the 13th movies. Any of the Evil Dead movies. Hell, I would recommend Anaconda or Crocodile over this. They at least gave us something. Where are you happy? Our time has been pilfered and you have nothing to show for it. I guess what I'm saying is, fuck this movie. Are you looking at me? Or the clock? <laughs>